Greetings, fellow traveler. As humanity awakens and evolves, we see change in every aspect of our lives. Let's consciously manifest our desires. I am Candace Craw Goldman, and this is New Earth Journey. Greetings. It's Tuesday, August 4th, 2015, and this is episode number two of New Earth Journey Radio. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today I'm welcoming my first official guest to the show, my dear friend, Heather Alice Shea. And I want to tell you a little bit about Heather before we start chatting tonight. So Heather's an intuitive guide. She's a sixth sense expert and coach. She's an internationally recognized intuitive guide and success coach for spiritual seekers and holistic entrepreneurs who want to go from what's my purpose to mission accomplished by manifesting their inner greatness and living a spiritual, spiritually centered life. Through developing strong intuitive abilities mixed with emotional empowerment, her clients are able to break up with self-limitation and gain clarity, momentum, and find their success-filled, happy place in life and in business. Since an early age, Heather was a profound empath with a deep understanding of the emotional blocks and trauma of others. She began coaching in 2003. However, in 2012, she had a near-death medical crisis, which left her with the ability to see and hear energetic information. And she's going to tell us a little bit more about that story in this interview. Heather conducts intuitive sessions via Skype and phone with clients all over the world in her signature down-to-earth style that's full of humor, heart, and the occasional swear word. And quite frankly, <laughs> that's what makes Heather so real and so appealing, at least to me. <laughs> she's one of the most authentic people I know, and mostly she's authentically joyful. Heather received her Bachelor of Science in Psychology from the University of North Florida, and her undergraduate research was presented at the 25th Annual Association of Psychological Science Convention in Washington, D.C. She's a certified hypnotist with the International Certification Board of Clinical Hypnotherapy, a licensed heart math life coach and mentor, and a graduate of Marie For Forleo's B-School. She's also a past life regression hypnosis expert, Dolores Cannon Method, and we have a lot to talk about that. And her first meditation CD debuted in Spirituality and Health magazine. And Heather's going to tell us tonight about a brand spanking new online class she's about to offer to the world. And she's going to talk about how each and every one of you out there can actually become your higher self. I could not be more pleased to be chatting with Heather this evening on the show. Heather and I chat quite a bit anyway, and we always have so much to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> and tonight we're going to share our conversation with you. So, phew, what an intro. Hi, Heather. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. <laughs> Hi, Candice. Wow, that is an intro. I did a really good job writing that bio, didn't I? <laughs> Thank you so much for your gracious introduction. And I, I couldn't be more excited to be on your show. I listened to your first show and it was absolutely wonderful. So it is my honor to be here. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. You know, when when you do shows like that, especially your very first show, you you speak into the microphone and you kind of think, I wonder if there's like four people out there. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so, so bless you for telling me that. Um, now, I was trying to remember exactly when it was we met. Can you help me remember that? How did we meet, Heather? I remember the moment we met, Candace. Actually, oh and it's my gosh. Yes, I do. And I don't think you and I have ever talked about this, so this will be be fun for us to reminisce. Um, it was a QHHT Level One course. It was May of 2013, and I was in the admission or the check-in line that morning to mm -hmm. sign up for class. And of course, 
you know, there was enough energy in that room to, you know, drop a bo- an atom bomb. It was insane. It was just absolutely the most amazing experience of my life. But I walked up to the desk to sign in and register. And you looked at me and you said, oh, my goodness, what a beautiful purple aura you have. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 that was the first moment that we had met. But yeah, we had we met at that level 1 course and then I came back in October um of 2013 for the advanced course and I saw you there. And, and then of course, you know, I spoke at the practitioner conference in 2014. So so we've had a lot of chances to to meet up and and spend time together. Mhm. <laughs> oh gosh. Well, thank you for reminding me of that. You know, I I I don't normally say that to people. And quite frankly, I don't always see auras. I mean, not everyone I look at can I, am I a normal aura reader, but sometimes people's energy just precedes them. I guess that's you. Oh, thank you. Well, I specifically remember it because I had just had my my awakening experience in fall of that year of 2012. So it was the first time I had ever really been to a place where people, you know, were open about those things. And I was just so excited. So when you said it to me, I was like, oh, my gosh, I know what color my aura is. This is amazing. Like... It was just, I mean, it was great. <laughs> oh, well, thank you for reminiscing about that. Um, listen, before I, I go on and, and ask you some more questions, I, I do want to share with the listeners our call-in number in case anyone wants to call in and ask you a question, Heather. So that number is 1-888-627-6008. That's 1-888-627-6008. Six zero zero eight, and Heather and I will will do everything we can to stop talking and take a question if we if we have yeah. a call. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm sure we'll have no problem filling up the airwaves with with our chatting. So, mm-hmm. would you mind telling us a little bit about yourself, a little bit about that that medical crisis that you had, maybe, and how you you came into this? Yeah, I, I would love to. So. Um, you know, I, I often tell my clients and the people that I work with in both, you know, the mainstream community, um, you know, the non-spiritual community or people who have people in the spiritual community or who have sort of embraced, um, you know, the esoteric, um, you know, metaphysical world um, that we all sort of live in on a daily basis. Um, I always tell them this, that usually you find people that do what I do for a living Um they've usually had their psychic gifts early in life, right? So we've all met those people, you know, they say, oh, you never since I was three years old, I could talk to the angels and see energy. And, you know, they've been had been doing it from a very early age. And, and for me, I can concretely tell you all that that was absolutely not my experience. I grew up in a very, very conservative home uh, here in the South. I'm, I'm from Florida. Uh, you know, that kind of thing, you know, anything metaphysical or spiritual was absolutely not, you know, looked well upon at all. Like, you know, the typical religious response is, is what I grew up with. You know, so for me to for me to step into this world, I got to tell you, it was a 180. But basically, a long story short, in, in 2008, I was diagnosed with this with severe endometriosis. And it was a very, very, very chronic illness, and I had a surgery a year for five years. I skipped one year. In 2010, I didn't have a surgery, um, but it was just so awful, and I was having so many other health complications that in 2012, I opted to have a full hysterectomy, but that in conjunction with many other health complications, uh, I almost died as a result of this surgery. Well, oh, months pre. Yeah. And, you know, you and I were chatting, we, you and I have chatted about this before. I think in the metaphysical community, we tend to take near death experiences. You know, we, there's a lot of people that have awoken right through that experience. Mm -hmm. Um, but I got to tell you, when you experience it yourself, there's nothing blase about it. (laughs) Yeah. Like there's, there's nothing like, Oh, you had a near death experience. Like I say it casually, but I, I can promise you it was it was definitely um, one of the most profound and and heart wrenching and uplifting experiences of of my life. But so I, I had a, a surgery, you know, and I wasn't recovering from it. And I had turned to meditation a couple of months prior because I had heard that it helped 
with pain reduction. And mm-hmm. I had been on, yeah, I mean, it just, I really needed some help. And I had been on pain medication for all of you who have experienced chronic pain, which I'm sure there are listeners out there that have, you know, how tough it is to live with that. So, and I found that meditation really worked for me and I, I and I, I really enjoyed it. So um, this one night I just snapped and I, I realized that I might not make it. And I, I remember laying in my bed, thinking to myself, this moment, this feeling came over me where I said to myself, I very well may not wake up tomorrow morning. And I had a vision in my head of my body being cold and stiff and my daughter coming in and, and seeing my stiff body like I found my father when he passed. How, and how was your daughter at the time? She was nine. Nine. Wow. Yeah. And so... Um, so this just absolutely sent shock waves of anger really is the emotion that I felt through my body. And I remember I thought to myself, Heather, what are you going to do when you wake up dead? Like, what are you going to do? And then I thought, wait a minute, I won't be able to do anything because I'll be dead. I swear to you, that's, I had that thought. So I was, I was just absolutely furious. So I thought to myself, this is it. I'm done. I am going to pray to whoever is listening, to whoever the hell. I don't care. Jesus, <laughs> Shiva, Buddha, Krishna, I don't know. The this is what I said on my last show. I think I said the exact same sentence that you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, just, I mean, sheer desperation, right? Like, I, we've all been there. So um, I, I am very, and this, this, and I, every fiber of my being was, was into this. I mean, there was, I would not be denied. That was how truly focused I was on getting an answer. And I heard a voice as plain as day, Candace, as plain as you and I are talking. I heard a voice in my head. I will never forget it. It said, Heather, you can embrace what has happened to you with grace and dignity or you can remain in your anger and bitterness for the remainder of your days. The wow. time is now. Choose. And I, I had never had anything like that happen to me. So I thought, okay, I'm getting somewhere because, hey, <laughs> at least somebody's talking back at this point. <laughs> so yeah. I, I went into this meditation. And, you know, it was, a, it was a 30-minute meditation. So a lot of things happened. But to sum it up, I met a being who I now know is my higher self mm-hmm. and came, came to me. And, you know, I had an opportunity in the meditation to ask questions, but when it came time to get my answers and it came time to ask, I thought to myself, Heather, this is it. You know, you've got a choice to make. What are you going to do? And I decided in that moment that I would not ask for answers and that I would not ask for healing and that I, I decided that I would accept everything that had happened to me and that I, if I had another day on earth, I would live it in gratitude, however painful or, you know, it may be. And I told this being this, I said, the only thing I want from you is for you to love me. I want to be able to just fall asleep tonight for you to love me. And and if I get up tomorrow and I'll be fine, you know, I'll deal with it. And I fell asleep to the meditation. But the next morning I woke up completely healed, (laughs) completely healed. Now, you know, we la- it's funny knowing now, you know, I'm sure some of the listeners are like, yeah, well, of course she asked for love and, you know, that's how it worked. But at the time, I had no idea that love was the all-prevailing, all-powerful force. I sort of stumbled backwards into this, as it were. You know, it's but- so brilliant, though, too, because what you, what you didn't do is the same thing I didn't do, which is please fix me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You didn't go there. And, and that, I think, is part of the answer, isn't it? It absolutely is. It absolutely is. It, it, it's, I, I absolutely love that point. And I, I, now I've learned, I think it's you take responsibility and you do what you can to help yourself um, and then allow grace to come into your life, right? right. Um, but, yeah, so from that moment forward, that's what, what I had. That was my awakening experience. And it was in that moment that I said to myself, there's way more to this world and to our soul than I've ever been taught. You know, it's, there's so much more than just what you hear on the news or talk about at dinner, at your random dinner party. You know, there's, there's just so much out there. And so I started on the, the quest, basically, mm-hmm. to discover how I healed myself. And then I came across, of course, 
our beloved mentor, Dolores Cannon, um, mm-hmm. we came across her, I came across her work. And as a treat to myself, I, I wanted to go and meet her. And so I went to her level one in May, which is where I met you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so when I, but when I woke that morning, that voice never went away. I was always able from that moment forward to hear that voice. Mm-hmm. So, you know, delving into, um, you know, Dolores's work, reading Bruce Lipton and Greg Braden and all of the great masters, um, you know, I now know that this force that healed me is the same power that moves absolutely everything that mm-hmm. you see and everything that you don't see. So, and I, and I truly believe that that power is the higher self. Um, and so I've, I've definitely decided to dedicate my life to <laughs> uh, the advancement of higher self work and helping people make this glorious connection um, in their lives. And it's, it's, I've been having a ball. It's absolutely, it's, it's absolutely amazing. It's so apparent that this is your passion, Heather. And I just love that about you. I, would like for you to tell us a little bit how your intuitive readings work. How do you hear and see energetic information? What is that like for you when you're helping somebody? Oh, wow. That's a great question. So, so, um, so how it works is very different than how it feels, I think, is probably a good way to say it. How it feels when I'm doing it, it feels as easy as breathing. I, it is that natural, and I think the trick to it, as I've had, you know, and I've had hundreds of students at this point, um, the trick to it is to realize that it indeed is that easy. It's, it's really a two-step process. It's one, realize it's easy, and two, trust yourself. But um, I have a couple of gifts. So I work mainly with higher self and spirit guides. You know, we have, there's many, many ways that we can interact with spirit, Um, You know, we've got mediums and and psychics and empaths and intuitives and medical intuitives and, you know, channelers and all of that stuff. Um, And I am, I I consider myself really a channel for higher self. That's really Mm -hmm. how it comes through. Um, But I have a couple of of gifts the the way that I do it. So it's mainly the intuition part, being an intuitive guide, is that I have clairvoyance, which is the ability to see, clairaudience, which is the, the ability to hear. Um, and then claircognizance, which is the ability to just know something. You, have you ever just like known something and you don't know how you know, but you know it? <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. And you know, that's, I think that's the one that is kind of the hardest to explain to people or to describe or even quite frankly for some people to accept because even in my own sessions, that is my best way of accessing my own higher self is in that way, just knowing. And there isn't any of those other things. There's nothing to really hear. There's nothing to see. And sometimes that's the hardest one to describe, but it's very real and very palpable. Yeah, it's the most, it's the subtlest clairvoyant gift. So there's four main clairvoyant gifts. The last one is clairsentience, which is you feel it, which is very similar to being empathic. To being an empath, um, but the one that you're the so that's your primary modality. And my becoming your higher self course, I teach people how to identify and hone their primary dominant intuitive modality or their intuitive gift. And the the the, the claircognizance is a very subtle one, and it's the reason why I think it's so subtle is because ironically, everybody it happens to you all the time, right. and so it's kind of like a fish in water. If you were to look at a fish and say, buddy, you are wet, it'd be like, what do you mean I'm wet? I'm just hanging out in the ocean. Like it would, it would have no idea what you're really talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, so co- consequently, I think it is the hardest to have and the hardest. So it's, it's beautiful that you have it um, because once you do have it, it is also pretty easy to do once you get the, once you get the knack, right? It's, it just, it's kind of there. And if you have the confidence to just say, okay, you know, this is what's coming in, then it mm-hmm. works like magic. Mm-hmm. It's like um, any, isn't it like any muscle, Heather? You, if you don't exercise it, it's flaccid and it doesn't work very well. But if you, if you trust it, which means give it a chance, you know, try it out and, and kind of go with it and just use it and see what happens. It just gets stronger and stronger. You know, I can tell you that, you know, my higher self and my soul path was to have a near-death experience and gain my intuitive abilities overnight. 
And you would not believe the number of people, this is so funny, but have looked at me and said, I wish that would happen to me. I'm like, you, re- you wish you would almost die and have a chronic illness for six years? <laughs> they're like, yeah, they're like, yeah, so I could, you know, have these, these abilities. But mm-hmm. what I say to them is what you just said. Okay, so I woke up into these gifts, right? But I will tell you that if I don't practice, you know, right. it's right. we all have to do that, right? So it's, <laughs> it is absolutely a conscious choice you make every day to let that part of yourself be a part of your daily life and allow that to unfold Um, and be there for you and become a part of your new norm. So yeah, I completely agree with you. You've you've got to practice. And I notice when I'm doing like 10, 15 sessions a week, (laughs) buddy, it happens, you know, and then when I back off, I notice that it's, you know, I mean, it's always there, but I can absolutely feel it. Like you're saying a muscle when I'm using it, buddy, I'm, yeah, I'm using it. I'm feeling it. It feels amazing. (laughs) So. Well, the intuitive readings that you do, describe what that's like for the client. What I mean, I know that for me, yeah. they're just they're just plain fun. They can be just a lot of fun. But what is it like for the client? What's the back and forth like? So it's very so the way I read is very different. You know, I, I use the word psychic to describe what I do because I think that that is a word that most people understand. Um, but in reality, I think the best way to describe this is it's like a super psychic session meets practical, down to earth, what are my next steps coaching session. So you know, it's so we, I begin each session by tapping in empathically. So one of the abilities I've had since childhood is to be able to get the root of any emotional trauma or block you have. Like, for instance, I had a client this morning and guilt was her pervading emotion from the moment she was born. And, you know, I was on the money with it. So the, I start with tapping into what is your primary emotional block and we start there. Um, and then from there, I invite spirit guides and higher self to come in and I always get them either clairvoyantly or clairaudiently and bring through definitive messages. I mean, I've got names, medical, you know, people with illnesses. I never know what's going to come through. I really leave that up to higher self. Um, you know, and, and really what it's like for me is, and it really is the simple, I, I sit in my chair and I, in front of the client, I mean, I, I, they, I, my client hears me say this. I say, you know, I'm, I want you to know that I'm here to serve your highest good. I am here as a servant. I have a servant's heart. You know, that, that is it. I am there as a servant to help my client and spirit come to greater understanding and remembrance of the all-powerful being that they are. And for us both to join in that space and see through the illusion <laughs> that we are anything other than one with all that is. Um, so with that true intention, and for all of you holistic practitioners out there, you know, if you make that your foundation, and I'm sure most of you do, but I make that a point with every session to make that my foundation. And I feel spirit is just so willing to work with us when they know that we're there to serve in that way. So, you know, spirit always steps forward. It's either their spirit guides or their higher self and, and with messages and, and, you know, words of inspiration or hope, or sometimes it's a good old fashion, just, you know, hey man, swift kick in the butt to get that person <laughs> moving. Um, and um, from, so I, I so it's, de- so I, I, with my clients, I don't know anything that's going on. I don't send out paperwork. I don't ask for information ahead of time. I, it's really is a true cold read. It is definitely, we let spirit have the first say, because they're going to take us to where it needs to go. The, I firmly believe, we can have all kinds of ideas, but really when we step into that space, we should, I, I firmly believe we let them lead. So from then, from then on, on from at that point, then it gets really conversational. So much like um, like in a, in a quantum healing hypnosis session, you prepare questions ahead of time for your higher self. I highly encourage all my clients to come with questions. And then from there, they ask their questions and we just talk it out. And every, every person leaves a session, I call them takeaways. So every client leaves with, you know, two to three actionable, practical steps that they can take to apply everything that we that came forward in this session into their life. Um, one of my pet peeves with intuitive sessions is that, or with psychic work, is that 
it's very, it's great. You get a cr- amazing high vibe knowledge and it's very uplifting. Mm-hmm. But then I think it leaves people scratching their heads going, okay, then, but yeah, now, now what? Now what? Now what do I do? You know, I mean, we've, I, oh, it, doesn't that drive you crazy? It drives it me crazy. It does drive me crazy. <laughs> Especially because it's usually something that people wait for. And often, you know, there there's usually a money exchange. So it's a service. And then when it's all over, they've waited for it. And they're hoping that it's going to help them in their lives. And sometimes a lot of these people are really on. They're really doing much like mm-hmm. what you're doing. They're, they're reading. They're, they're gaining information, all of that. It's the practical takeaway that's so important because if you hang up with somebody and you don't have a new plan, uh, you know, a, a new thing to do, a different way to see your challenges, you know, as as fun as it may have been, I don't know, you know, not not as worthwhile maybe as something a little more practical because let's face it, we're still living our 3D lives. Yeah. And you know, what my higher self says to me is they say, so the first time I asked them about that, you know, you know, what is this, what is the balance between allowance, allowing spirit to move through, you know, allowing spirit to heal and help, allowing spirit to change my life and letting that grace come in. And then, you know what, I have to live my life and contribute, you know, to my own evolution Mm -hmm. What is the balance there? And what they showed me, what my higher self showed me, was a couple dancing. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know how many of you have ever taken ballroom dance classes or if you've ever been in a bar dance. I'm sure we've all done the (laughs) drunk bar dancing. But... um, (laughs) But when you, when you really learn how to dance, and my husband is a, a very, he was almost a pro ballroom dancer. So Really? I'm taking, yes, he's, <laughs> that guy can move. Many, many a nights I've, I've had him stolen away by the ladies because that guy can dance. But <laughs> Lucky you. Mm-hmm. I know, he's great. But when you, so when you learn how to dance, it's very important that you hold, they call it your frame. And so you can't, be stiff and domineering, but you can't be a wet noodle at the same time. And our dance instructor would always pop me. She would always say, Heather, hold your frame, hold your frame. So, and she'd say, if you hold your frame, he can move you. You have to be strong, but not stiff. You know, if you're too stiff, he can't move you. But if you're a noodle, then you, he can't, he can't move you either. So they showed, spirit showed me this couple to say, it's like the dance. Mm-hmm. You have to be strong and stand and contribute to the dance, but always allow us to lead. And if you do, we will take you through the dance floor of your life and show <laughs> you, you know, how to, to, to express yourself in, in the most beautiful way. Mm-hmm. So um, I think that, that, that I try to bring that into my sessions. Let's dance with spirit. Let's let them lead us. But at the end of it, you know, let's also take action Mm -hmm. because we are the ones who chose to come down here. You know, we are the, we are here, the consciousness that is Heather, the consciousness that's Candace, the consciousness that's you, the people listening. You came into this life for a reason. And that is because you have the ability to take action on the things that need to be done. You know, it's no accident. Right. Um, so, I, yeah, I, I really believe that it's, it's, you know, it's that whole Gandhi quote. You know, we've got to be the change that, that we want to see. And, you know, to be fair, it's very hard to move forward when you're blocked and when it's your own bag of stuff. You know, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I'm psychic and intuitive and empathic for Pete's sake. And I struggle sometimes, you know, mm-hmm. because it's my baggage. It's, you know, so that's, that's what's beautiful about this work, Candace, and, and, and your show. And, and what I'm bringing and what everyone else brings to life is that we desperately need each other. Yeah. And that's what it's all about. It's all about us moving back into love and, and embracing each other and saying, you know what? I've got your back, man. We're going to do this together and it's going to be <laughs> awesome. And, 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 and in that way, I think that's how we heal each other. So it's a lot I, of fun. I think that's just so beautiful, Heather. I, I truly believe what you've just said is, is so important. And I think sometimes those phrases are, 
are tossed around with a, with some inauthenticity, there's still quite a human sense. Do you not notice that where where people move in in their reality, move in the world as if there's not enough for everybody, as as if there's limitations that the only way that that some people can can manage as success is if if somebody else doesn't. And I have found the exact opposite to be mm -hmm. true. The Absolutely. more that I help other people, the easier everything turns around and is for me. And and the and if and when I I get fearful and try to oh I don't know hoard or save or whatever mm -hmm. I mean that's when it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. No, you're you're a hundred percent right, and it's funny that you said that. It's it's absolutely beautiful. In my program, there's a module um, on desire. I, and the, the program basically takes people through the five elements of becoming their higher self. And one of the elements of that is desire. And the basic premise of, of saying, you know, the, the root of all of it, of lack of lack mentality or feeling like there's not enough um, or living in that fear-based reality of, you know, jealousy, resentment, all of those things, which are very human and they're, they're fine. They serve their purpose. We certainly don't want to stay in them. Um, right. But the, the root of that all essentially is the, the reason why you cannot get more by not giving. The reason why giving is more is because when you sit back and you say, I'm going to do this for me at, at the exclusion of other people, Mm -hmm. That very act alone necessitates your own lack because mm -hmm. what you're essentially saying to the universe is, I do not have this thing. I am not embodying this thing. That thing is not a part of me and I am not one with it because I desire it. If you, mm -hmm. des you cannot desire what you already embody. It is already you. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when you so when we go into these you know profound states of desiring and 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 lack mentality and feeling like we've got to protect ourselves, we literally through that emotion and through that thought pattern create the lack. The lack is is the illusion. The lack actually does not exist, mm -hmm. right? We create it through thinking that it does. The reality is that the universe is all abundant. I mean, I, I listened to an Alan Watts uh, YouTube video. If, if, if you haven't had a, if the listeners or if you haven't had a chance to listen to him, I think you're familiar with him. Um, I just picked up three very old Alan Watts paperbacks at an antique store. Are you store. serious? I'm serious. I've seen the YouTubes and I saw these really old, funky, like 70-ish, tiny little paperbacks and I snatched them all up. They were like a dollar. And I'm like, yay! Oh, <laughs> yeah, so Alan cool. Watts is great. Cool. Yeah, he's, he's, oh gosh, he's, listening to him is like poetry. Um, but he, he had a, I, one of his YouTube videos, he said, look at, look at the world, look at nature. Far too many seeds needed to plant the forest. You know, far, far too many, you know, there's, there's, it's, it's so abundant, it's not even funny, right? Like one pine cone has how many needles on it? Just one. I mean, it's millions upon millions upon millions of seeds. It's so abundant that we, we can't even, we literally cannot even fathom how abundant the universe really is. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think that, that in the spiritual community, what I, what I have learned in the spiritual community is that we are, a, we are basically a group of people who have embraced a certain set of higher truths, but we're still people. <laughs> You know, we, we still bring all of our BS and our baggage. I mean, yes. I, I do. You know, I sure. certainly do. Of course and, uh, we do. So, um, <laughs> so, yeah, so I think that, that <laughs> it's a lot like we're all, it's, like, it's a lot like a dark room. I, I, I kind of feel like the experience here on Earth is a lot like a dark room. And you sort of <laughs> bumble around in the dark and hit your knees on the furniture until you figure out where all the pieces are. <laughs> right, right. Well, you know, at least hopefully we, we understand that when we're feeling something discordant in our life, and it doesn't matter what it is. I don't care if it's your health. I don't care if it's, um, you know, you're in, in your vehicle on your way to work. You're trying to work on a project. You're trying to do something. And if you are finding 
discordance happen if you know if there is struggle or if there's something it's time to to sit back and try to evaluate from a different position what is going on there i mean at least hopefully those of us in the spiritual community have come to to that that so that we don't um, stay on that and I see you know in some of your notes you call it the hamster wheel and it just makes a lot of sense to call it the hamster wheel that um, and, and isn't that what your new program is all about Heather you know sort of to give us tools so that we can mm -hmm. um, you know break through some of the repetition of struggle that is in so many of our lives. Yeah, so I, I created the program, um, and it's called Becoming Your Higher Self, and this is really like my baby. I'm, I'm so excited to finally be giving this to the world. Um, but the program, in essence, is designed around, it was really birthed through the last several years of coaching people into higher self-alignment. And what I found was that there's a specific, there are specific elements that people need to have in order to garner a very, very strong relationship with their higher self. Now, by a relationship with our, your higher self, I mean a daily connection, an open connection. I mean living as and with your higher self every single day. It's, it, you know, it really moves beyond becoming intuitive. It's, it's more than just being intuitive. This is about embracing and embodying your divine God consciousness, which is entirely possible every single day of your life. So it's about embracing a life without limitation. You know, that's, that's really the, one of the foundational principles is that we do not have to live lives with limitation. We are limitless beings. So I created a program because I noticed that there's these, there are five main elements that people need to have addressed in order to establish this relationship. Um, so the program takes people through those five, those five elements. Um, it's a six module course. So the first one is, I call it um, the higher self mindset. It's the, the first module really works to help you learn to see your world through the perspective of your higher self. Now, stop and think about that for a minute. That is a big deal. You know, one of my one of my big things that I think is pretty sensational and really, quite honestly, pisses a lot of people in the spiritual community off um, because they built entire practices around the the concept of limiting beliefs. We actually don't limiting beliefs are a total spiritual myth. We we do not have limiting beliefs. <laughs> I it's loved a, reading that about your program. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't buy into any of that crap. Like to me, that's no. <laughs> that that's that is. I always say this, the biggest limiting belief you have is the fact that you have limiting beliefs. So um, it's a, the first module is about gaining higher self perspective. And I have like four core mindset shifts that you have to make. You've got to cross those hurdles in order to be able to really start shifting and becoming your higher self every day. Um, so the first one does that. And I mean, there's a lot of things I go through, but that's the essence of the first module. The second one is called moving beyond limitation and the ego. So before we can really start aligning with higher self, we have to figure out positive um, coping strategies and how to really learn to develop a new, positive, healthy relationship with our beliefs and with our ego and with fear. Mm -hmm. So um, you don't have limiting beliefs. You have lessons to learn. Your higher self would never in a thousand years look at you and say you have limiting beliefs. They would look at you and say, from our perspective, you, ha you are in, you are having an experience to facilitate the, the, the greatness of the unfoldment of your soul, <laughs> right? It's the unfoldment of your soul. That's all your limiting beliefs are. You know, so you learn to see all of these things that would limit you as actually, I call it turning stumbling blocks into building blocks. They're actually building blocks. Um, you're, you know, I talk about how the ego really isn't like <laughs> I, one of these days I'm going to get around to it. I want to write a blog post that's called, um, ego. It's the new age Satan. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm, yeah. The demonizing of the ego is, is pretty ridiculous because, you know, let's face it, we have one. So how about make friends with it, figure out what it's good for and partner yes. up with it. 
Yeah. Yeah. Your ego really loves you like a lot. Your <laughs> ego really loves you. It's your best friend. I love my ego. You wouldn't be able, I mean, I, I, my hope is that every um, student and client that I have falls in love with their ego because unless you learn to love all aspects of yourself, even the part of you that doesn't quite understand, you know, I think of the ego at sometimes, sometimes as like a, a, a traumatized six-year-old. Mm-hmm. You know, it's got the coping mechanisms of a six-year-old, but that doesn't mean it's trying to hurt you. And that doesn't mean it doesn't love you. And the more we try to push it away, the less likely we are to succeed. In my program, I have a technique called come sit next to me. I know it's a stupid name, but. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I kind of like it. Yeah. So um, that's a friendly thing rather than trying to like, you know, squash something or, or change something with force. I mean, that's, that's a wonderful invitation for dialogue. That's a great yeah. start. Yeah, we don't really need to do anything with our ego. So the, the, main, the main goal of, of ego development is to not let your ego control the situation. That's all. You're never going to get rid of your ego. You're a human being. It's a part of the psychological makeup of us. I mean, I don't know. Maybe in 500 Thank years, you. we won't have egos anymore. <laughs> no, but- I love hearing you say that. I love hearing you say that. Because yeah. when spiritual, spiritual teachers talk about killing it, getting past yeah. it, denying yeah. it, all of that, that's never rung true to me. You know, an ego, yeah, it's, it doesn't. It doesn't work. And, and it's that old saying, what you resist persists. Mm-hmm. So I teach, you know, it's all about learning how to love yourself. Your ego is a part of yourself. You don't want to let your six-year-old navigate, you know, your life. That, the, the, problem, the, the problem of the ego, quote-unquote, problem is that we let the ego run the show. That's all, period. That's the end of it. It's not this big demon. It's not trying to sabotage you. It's not paralyzing you. It's not stopping you from doing anything. You just don't want it running the show. So in the second module, we just squash all that in the bud. We get all that squared away. And then from there, we move into psychic and intuitive development and emotional empowerment. So um, the third module is um, called intuition and getting clear messages 24-7. So um, much of my program is science-based um, mm-hmm. because my coaching certifications are from HeartMath. Um, I'm really heavily into the science. Also, too, when I awoke, that was the pro- approach I took because I wasn't a spiritualist. So I went the hard science route. I was back in school getting my undergraduate in psychology, and I was in doing. I was actually get a, at that point in time conducting research on cognitive. Um, um, cognitive development. <laughs> so I was all about where's the research. So I'm, I'm really glad I did because I learned some really great techniques that are science-based that help you tap into your intuition. You know, it's not, it's not, not the 1700s anymore, guys. We, we have the, the, the data to support and understand the, psycho, the psychophysiological processes through which we receive psychic information. That's the bottom line. So I love, I love teaching it to my students because I'm like, you're going to be the next time you go somewhere and somebody poo poos your woo woo stuff. Let me tell you what, you're going to hit them with some knowledge, buddy. You're going to be able to be like, Oh yeah, well, how about this? And then you get to feel really (laughs) smart uh, because, because it it is actually explainable. So you learn that I teach people the, the, the process behind doing it. Um, and then, of course, the blocks to it, which are always like, am I making this up? Is this really yeah. happening? Um, so really, that module gets you to where you are having a two-way conversation with your higher self. And then the fourth one is emotional empowerment. And I think probably, I have to be honest, this one's my favorite module. Um, it's all about understanding your emotions as a compass to alignment. And the, so there's, you have a three part inner guidance system and most people don't know this, or this is sort of new, new development, right? I mean, the higher self, we've been talking about higher self for what, 20 years, maybe 30 years in the, in the new age, in the, the, the re, in recent human history. Right. So there's not a lot out there on higher self development. There's a couple of books, you know, if you pop over on Amazon, but it's not like you're really going to get this anywhere. It's up to us. Right. Every last one of us to create this. You, that means you listening to this right now. Yes, you. <laughs> you can make a contribution to this body of work by living your purpose. But um, So there's, there's a three-part inner guidance system. It's your intuition, your emotions, and your desire. So those three things, each in my program, each of those have a module. 
So emotions, your intuition, your emotions, and your desire work like a compass. Those three things in tandem work like the needle of a compass. And you can think of your higher self as north. And then those three things constantly guiding you and keeping you in alignment with that internal north. Um, but so in the module on in emotional empowerment, we learn how to deal for, to, I, I basically teach people how to fee, to live and basically deal <laughs> with their emotions because emotions are incredibly powerful. The science shows that your emotions are 5,000 times more powerful than thought. It has an electric, electromagnetic charge 5,000 more times, 5,000 times more powerful than thought. And yet in the spiritual community, all, you constantly hear thoughts create your reality. Thoughts, And you know what the truth is? This is another outrageous truth. Um, your, thoughts do, your, your thoughts do not create your reality. Emotion, <laughs> emotions precede thought. Now, your thoughts do create your reality, but what creates your thoughts? Your emotions. Yeah. Your emotions create your thoughts, and that is the missing piece that we have in psychic and spiritual development. And I'm going to give a shout out to, to one of my mentors who has passed, Dr. David R. Hawkins, yeah. his work. If you guys want to learn more about emotional development, please go buy his book, The Power Versus Force, and his book, Letting Go. I, I, um, you know, I heavily studied those, that, his work, but, that, but he, he is one of the few you people that say that, you know, there was a time before you understood what your conscious thoughts were and even knew how to form them in your mind. Okay. Before that, you had a feeling, you had emotion and it was raw and it created, and that is what creates your reality. So I teach people how to go and harness the power of their emotions, mm -hmm. how you can manifest in, in hours. I mean, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this, it's going to sound wild, and I'm sure many of your listeners will get this, but I can think something, and in two hours, it happens. Phone calls, <laughs> what, pretty much whatever. Sure. Mm -hmm. So um, if you know how to align your thoughts and your emotions and your will, conscious choice comes in there. But if you know how to do that, life, you're, then you're in flow. I'm not going to say it becomes magic, but, but, it, but your life begins to flow. And then my fifth module is desire. And, and um, I, I basically, at that, at that point, we're, we're talking about what do you want in your life and learning that your desires and the things that you strive for are beautiful and sacred, even the ones based in ego, because those are clues to your higher purpose. Mm -hmm. So um, in, the, in module five, we, we really get down to brass tacks of uncovering your mission and your purpose and what your message to the world is. Um, you know, one of the things I do with my, my clients is I have, I call it the microphone experiment. I pretend like I hand them a microphone and I say, okay, here's a mic. The entire world can hear you. What would you say? <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Like pretend you're on Oprah, right? Like what would you say if you were on Oprah? Like she gave oh. you like five minutes to talk. <laughs> That's a good one. I, be I bet you get some silence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what's I do, but what's the wild is don't we all have so much to say? I mean, look inside your heart for two minutes. I mean, your heart has so much to say. Um, so, and then in the last module, I call it making crazy meaningful money because the fifth and the fifth element is abundance. And um, I've noticed that spiritual people kind of have some blocks, you know, to live in an abundant life. And uh, you know, it's time to let that go and realize that the more abundant we are, the more in alignment we are, and the more um, we are freed and liberated to, to help the world. So that is my program in a nutshell. <laughs> um, oh, I, but love, I, I love it. And don't you have like um, a free webinar that, that explains it all and it's a, a program in and of itself. Tell us about that. Yeah. So the program goes live on September 21st. That's when the first module um, becomes available. I'm hosting a completely free uh, training course or training class on the 24th. It's called the five elements of becoming your higher self, where I am going to give the distilled version. It's kind of like the best of the best of all of these five elements on this, on this training course. So it's going to be and about that's, and, that's August 24th. Is that oh, I'm sorry. Oh yeah. I'm sorry. August 24th. I uh, just August. checked. I'm writing it down because I want to go. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, definitely come. You know, so you can go to um, Candace. I believe there's a link on on your website. Yeah, right uh, on the front page, newearthjourney.com. They'll um, just click on Heather's um, picture right there on the front page, and it'll take you to where you can sign up for this free webinar and get more information. Yeah. So you'll get all that, and it's completely free. You know, it's it's the mm -hmm. the essence of the five elements, and you know, I'm I hope that many people will will come and and take. I think a lot of people will be able to just take that bit of information and hit the ground running. You know, we're all at at different uh, points in our our higher self development, and then the program is there for people who who really want to dive in into this journey with a community and with support. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a, it's a true online coaching program. Um, you know, you get module content every Monday. It's online, so you can do it at your own pace. But I also have a live call every Thursday. And then we have a great group in, in Facebook that it also supports. So, um, yeah, I mean, this is my, my goal. My mission is to touch a million people's lives with high self, with higher self work. I um, bet you'll do it too. I just bet you will. You're you're you've taken off like a rocket ship. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, you know if anything, I'll have fun while I do it. So that's really that's, what matters. <laughs> and that, you know what? I and I think you can just kind of feel that 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 you're this is fun and 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 a passion for you. But I'd also like. Um, the listeners to remember that that Heather does these coaching sessions one on one, and she's actually offering New Earth Journey listeners a discount for her one on one coaching that that'll last to the end of this year. Yes, I am. So, for any of you that are listening to this, you can go to heatheralishay.com. You can send me an email through my contact form. Um, or you can also sign up for sessions online and I will give you 25% off of all ses of, of my session rate. Mm -hmm. So I would absolutely be honored to work with anyone. And Candace, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to extend that. I, I, I really yeah. appreciate that. Yeah. It's, it's so wonderful for you to be so generous like that. So, so you listeners out there, and this is not just for the live call. So this is you know, we're talking here in August, but Heather's making this incredible discount available all the way through the end of 2015. So if you're listening to an archived show um, within the year of 2015, please know that you can contact her and just give her my name or the name New Earth Journey and um, pick up your 25% discount um, for that. But, you know, Heather, I was part of your test class last year, and I, I did want to share with the listeners here as we're as we're heading um, towards the end of, of our hour speaking together how important um, how incredible how big how memorable the experience I had with you in in your test class was I mean I deal with higher self all the time in in sessions myself as a client in sessions where I'm the practitioner. I've been doing this work for a number of years, uh, more than seven now. And so the whole concept and all the different permutations are very familiar um, to me. But, but with your program, I found myself having an absolutely new and unique experience that, that is, was so profound and, and wonderful that, that I benefit from that to this very day. It was, it was different. And part of that I know is because I was sitting in the energy of the group of really lovely people and being led by someone who is excited and has his heart as big as this planet. And that's you, Heather. So thank oh, you. Thank you, Candace. It was a joy <laughs> to have you be a part of it. I, I know that you were supposed to be there. I wish we had more time to talk about how spirit brought us together on that. Um, because that was just amazing, but yeah, it was. Uh, we had a great time, and and I am so glad that you were that you were a part of it. I know. I think you helped me through that first that f that first course. So, <laughs> oh, well, bless your heart. I I love that we're helping each other, and that isn't that just what it's all about, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, tell me the the higher self. Is there anything about it that's surprising? I think. I, the question I'd like to ask is, as we're moving towards the end of the show, does the higher self, does it ever set up challenges for us that maybe we, our conscious mind, would, would rather not go through? A lot of people wonder about that. Absolutely it does. And what I think what we have to remember is that, you know, when we, and of course Dolores' work talks about this, but before you come into this life, 
absolutely everything that happens to you, you signed up for. You, you know, there was no chicanery or you knew you, you planned this, you were in full awareness of it. And so, you know, and that's a hard pill to swallow. You know, we're, we're in a very interesting point in our evolution. And I think that that's very hard for, for, for human beings to grasp. But the reality is that no, there, there are no, you know, trick scenarios or things that are given to us that are hard for us that, you know, just because no, we, we want all of those things to happen and, and, and um, experience them for our benefit. So. Well, Heather, there's the music, so I think we're about out of time. I want to thank you so much again for being here. I want to thank everyone who's listening. And I want everyone to know that two weeks from now, my next guest will be Jill Don Donley Reggae. She's going to be talking about autism recovery. And thanks again so much, Heather. And thanks everyone out there. Thank and you, Candace. Love you, Heather. Love you too. And I look forward to talking to your listeners again and hearing from them. And I'll talk to you soon. Of clairvoyance, which is the ability to see, clairaudience, which is the, the ability to hear, um, and then claircognizance, which is the ability to just know something. You, have you ever just like known something and you don't know how you know, but you know it? <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. And you know, that's, I think that's the one that is kind of the hardest to explain to people or to describe or even quite frankly, for some people to accept, because even in my own sessions, that is my best way of accessing my own higher self is in that way, just knowing. And there isn't any of those other things. There's nothing to really hear. There's nothing to see. And sometimes that's the hardest one to describe, but it's very real and very palpable. Yeah, it's the most, it's the subtlest clairvoyant gift. So there's four main clairvoyant gifts. The last one is clairsentience, which is you feel it, which is very similar to being empathic. To being an empath. Um, but the one that you're, the, so that's your primary modality. In my Becoming Your Higher Self course, I teach people how to identify and hone their primary dominant intuitive modality or their intuitive gift. And the, 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 the claircognizance is a very subtle one. And it's the reason why I think it's so subtle is because ironically, everybody, it happens to you all the time. Right. And so it's kind of like a fish in water. If you were to look at a fish and say, buddy, you are wet, it'd be like, what do you mean I'm wet? I'm just hanging out in the ocean. Like it would, it would have no idea what you're really talking about. Mm -hmm. um, so co consequently, I think it is the hardest to have and the hardest. So it's, it's beautiful that you have it um, because once you do have it, it is also pretty easy to do once you get the, once you get the knack, right? It's, it just, it's kind of there. And if you have the confidence to just say, okay, you know, this is what's coming in, then it mm -hmm. works like magic. Mm -hmm. It's like um, any, isn't it like any muscle, Heather? You, if you don't exercise it, it's flaccid and it doesn't work very well. But if you, if you trust it, which means give it a chance, you know, try it out and, and kind of go with it and just use it and see what happens. It just gets stronger and stronger. You know, I can tell you that, you know, my higher self and my soul path was to have a near death experience and gain my intuitive abilities overnight. And you would not believe the number of people, this is so funny, but have looked at me and said, I wish that would happen to me. I'm like, you, re you wish you would almost die and have a chronic illness for six years? <laughs> they're like, yeah, they're like, yeah, so I could, you know, have these, these abilities. Mm -hmm. But what I say to them is what you just said. Okay, so I woke up into these gifts, right? But I will tell you that if I don't practice, you know, right. it's, right. we all have to do that, right? So it's, <laughs> It is absolutely a conscious choice you make every day to let that part of yourself be a part of your daily life and allow that to unfold um, and be there for you and become a part of your new norm. So yeah, I completely agree with you. you you've got to practice. And I notice when I'm doing like 10, 15 sessions a week, <laughs> buddy, right. I'm, it's, it happens. So, you know, And then when I back off, I notice that it's you know, I mean, it's always there, but I can absolutely feel it. Like you're saying a muscle when I'm using it, buddy, I'm, yeah, I'm using it. I'm feeling it. And it feels amazing. <laughs> so, well, the intuitive readings that you do, 
describe what that's like for the client. What I mean, I know that for me, yeah, they're just yeah. they're just plain fun. They can be just a lot of fun. But what is it like for the client? What's the back and forth like? So it's very so the way I read it is very different. You know, I, I use the word psychic to describe what I do because I think that that is a word that most people understand. Um, but in reality, I think the best way to describe this is it's like a super psychic session meets practical, down to earth, what are my next steps coaching that I would accept everything that had happened to me. And that I, if I had another day on earth, I would live it in gratitude, however painful or, all, you know, it may be. Mm -hmm. And I told this being this, I said, the only thing I want from you is for you to love me. I want to be able to just fall asleep tonight for you to love me. And, and if I get up tomorrow and I'll be fine, you know, I'll deal with it. And I fell asleep to the meditation. But the next morning I woke up completely healed, <laughs> completely healed. Now, you know, we la it's funny knowing now, you know, I'm sure some of the listeners are like, yeah, well, of course she asked for love and, you know, that's how it worked. But at the time, I had no idea that love was the all-prevailing, all-powerful force. I sort of stumbled backwards into this, as it were. You know, it's but so brilliant, though, too, because what you, what you didn't do is the same thing I didn't do, which is please fix me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You didn't go there. And, and that, I think, is part of the answer, isn't it? It absolutely is. It absolutely is. It, it, it's, I, I absolutely love that point. And I, I, now I've learned, I think, it's you take responsibility and you do what you can to help yourself um, and then allow grace to come into your life, right? right. Um, but, yeah, so from that moment forward, that's what, what I had. That was my awakening experience. And it was in that moment that I said to myself, there's way more to this world and to our soul than I've ever been taught. You know, it's, there's so much more than just what you hear on the news or talk about at dinner at your random dinner party. You know, there's, there's just so much out there. And so I started on the, the quest, basically, mm -hmm. to discover how I healed myself. And then I came across, of course, our beloved mentor, Dolores Cannon. Um, mm -hmm. We came across her, I came across her work. And as a treat to myself, I, I wanted to go and meet her. And so I went to her level one in May, which is where I met you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so when I, but when I woke that morning, that voice never went away. I was always able from that moment forward to hear that voice. Mm -hmm. So, you know, delving into, um, you know, Dolores's work, reading Bruce Lipton and Greg Braden and all of the great masters, um, you know, I now know that this force that healed me is the same power that moves absolutely everything mm -hmm. that you see and everything that you don't see. So, and I, and I truly believe that that power is the higher self. Um, and so I've, I've definitely decided to dedicate my life to <laughs> uh, the advancement of higher self work and helping people make this glorious connection um, in their lives. And it's, it's, I've been having a ball. It's absolutely it's absolutely it's, amazing. It's so apparent that this is your passion, Heather, and I just love that about you. I would like for you to tell us a little bit how your intuitive readings work. How do you hear and see energetic information? What is that like for you when you're helping somebody? Oh, wow. That's a great question. So, so, um, so how it works is very different than how it feels, I think, is probably a good way to say it. How it feels when I'm doing it it feels as easy as breathing. I, it is that natural. And I think the trick to it, as I've had, you know, and I've had hundreds of students at this point, um, the trick to it is to realize that it indeed is that easy. It's, it's really a two-step process. It's one, realize it's easy, and two, trust yourself. But um, I have a couple of gifts. So I work mainly with higher self and spirit guides. You know, we have, there's many, many ways that we can interact with spirit. Um, you know, we've got mediums and, and psychics and empaths and intuitives and medical intuitives and, you know, channelers and all of that stuff. Um, and I am, a cha I, I consider myself really a channel for higher self. That's really mm -hmm. how it comes through. Um, but I have a couple of, of gifts the, the way that I do it. So it's mainly... The intuition part, being an intuitive guide, is that I have... When, 
when you do shows like that, especially your very first show, you you speak into the microphone and you kind of think, I wonder if there's like four people out there. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so bless you for telling me that. Um, now, I was trying to remember exactly when it was we met. Can you help me remember that? How did we meet, Heather? I remember the moment we met Candace, actually. Oh, and it's funny. gosh. Yes, I do. And I don't think you and I have ever talked about this. So this will be, be fun for us to reminisce. Um, it was a QHHT level one course. It was May of 2013. And I was in the admission or the check-in line that morning to mm -hmm. sign up for class. And of course, you know, there was enough energy in that room to, you know, drop a bomb, an atom bomb. It was insane. It was just absolutely the most amazing experience of my life. But I walked up to the desk to sign in and register. And you looked at me and you said, oh my goodness, what a beautiful purple aura you have. <laughs> so, so, so that was the first moment that we had met. But yeah, we had, we met at that level one course. And then I came back in October um, of 2013 for the advanced course, and I saw you there. And, and then, of course, you know, I spoke at the practitioner conference in 2014. So, so we've had a lot of chances to, to meet up and, and spend time together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, thank you for reminding me of that. You know, I, I, I don't normally say that to people. And quite frankly, I don't always see auras. I mean, not everyone I look at can I, am I a normal aura reader but sometimes people's energy just precedes them i guess that's you oh thank you well i specifically remember it because i had just had my my awakening experience in fall of that year of 2012 so it was the first time i had ever really been to a place where people you know were open about those things and i was just so excited so when you said it to me i was like oh my gosh i know what color my aura is this is amazing like <laughs> it was just, I mean, it was great. <laughs> oh, well, thank you for reminiscing about that. Um, listen, before I, I go on and, and ask you some more questions, I, I do want to share with the listeners our call-in number in case anyone wants to call in and ask you a question, Heather. So that number is 1-888-627-6008. That's 1-888-627-6008. Six zero zero eight, and Heather and I will will do everything we can to stop talking and take a question if we if we have yeah. a <laughs> Otherwise, I'm sure we'll have no problem filling up the airwaves with with our chatting. So, mm -hmm. would you mind telling us a little bit about yourself, a little bit about that that medical crisis that you had, maybe, and how you you came into this? Yeah, I, I would love to. So. Um, you know, I, I often tell my clients and the people that I work with in both, you know, the mainstream community, um, you know, the non-spiritual community or people who have people in the spiritual community or who have sort of embraced, um, you know, the esoteric, um, you know, metaphysical world um, that we all sort of live in on a daily basis. Um, I always tell them this, that usually you find people that do what I do for a living, um, they've usually had their psychic gifts early in life, right? So we've all met those people, you know, they say, oh, you never since I was three years old, I could talk to the angels and see energy. And, you know, they've been had been doing it from a very early age. And, and for me, I can concretely tell you all that that was absolutely not my experience. I grew up in a very, very conservative home uh, here in the South. I'm, I'm from Florida. Uh, you know, that kind of thing, you know, anything metaphysical or spiritual was absolutely not, you know, looked well upon at all. Like, you know, the typical religious response is, is what I grew up with. You know, so for me to, for me to step into this world, I got to tell you, it was a 180. But basically, a long story short, in, in 2008, I was diagnosed with, a, with severe endometriosis. And it was a very, very, very chronic illness. And I had a surgery a year for five years. I skipped one year. In 2010, I didn't have a surgery. Um, but it was just so awful. And I was having so many other health complications that in 2012, I opted to have a full hysterectomy. But that in conjunction with many other health complications, uh, I almost died as a result of this surgery. Well, oh, months goodness. pre... 
Yeah. And, you know, you and I were chatting, we, you and I have chatted about this before. I think in the metaphysical community, we tend to take near death experiences. You know, we, there's a lot of people that have awoken right through that experience. Mm -hmm. Um, but I got to tell you, when you experience it yourself, there's nothing blasé about it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> there, yeah, like there's there's nothing like, oh, you had a near-death experience. Like I say it casually, but I, I can promise you it was it was definitely um, one of the most profound and, and heart-wrenching and uplifting experiences of, of my life. But so I, I had a, a surgery, you know, and I wasn't recovering from it. And I had turned to meditation a couple of months prior because I had heard that it helped with pain reduction. And mm -hmm. I had been on, yeah, I mean, it just, I really needed some help. And I had been on pain medication for all of you who have experienced chronic pain, which I'm sure there are listeners out there that have, you know, how tough it is to live with that. So, and I found that meditation really worked for me and I, I and I, I really enjoyed it. So, um, this one night I just snapped and I, I realized that I might not make it. And I, I remember laying in my bed thinking to myself, this moment, this feeling came over me where I said to myself, I very well may not wake up tomorrow morning. And I had a vision in my head of my body being cold and stiff and my daughter coming in and, and seeing my stiff body like I found my father when he passed. How, and how was your daughter at the time? She was nine. Nine. Wow. Yeah. And so, um, so this just absolutely sent shock waves of anger, really, is the emotion that I felt through my body. And I remember I thought to myself, Heather, what are you going to do when you wake up dead? Like, what are you going to do? And then I thought, wait a minute, I won't be able to do anything because I'll be dead. I swear to you, that's, I had that thought. So I was, I was just absolutely furious. So I thought to myself, this is it. I'm done. I am going to pray to whoever is listening, to whoever the hell. I don't care. Jesus, <laughs> Shiva, Buddha, Krishna, I don't know. The this is what I said on my last show. I think I said the exact same sentence that you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, just, I mean, sheer desperation, right? Like, I, we've all been there. So um, I, I and very in a, this and I every fiber of my being was was into this. I mean, there was I would not be denied. That was how truly focused I was on getting an answer. And I heard a voice as plain as day, Candace, as plain as you and I are talking. I heard a voice in my head. I will never forget it. It said, Heather, you can embrace what has happened to you with grace and dignity or you can remain in your anger and bitterness for the remainder of your days. The wow. time is now. Choose. And I, I had never had anything like that happen to me. So I thought, okay, I'm getting somewhere because, hey, <laughs> at least somebody's talking back at this point. <laughs> so yeah. I, I went into this meditation and, you know, it was a 30-minute meditation. So a lot of things happened. But to sum it up, I met a being who I now know is my higher self mm -hmm. and came, came to me. And, you know, I had an opportunity in the meditation to ask questions, but when it came time to get my answers and it came time to ask, I thought to myself, Heather, this is it. You know, you've got a choice to make. What are you going to do? And I decided in that moment that I would not ask for answers and that I would not ask for healing and that I, I decided... Greetings, fellow traveler. As humanity awakens and evolves, we see change in every aspect of our lives. Let's consciously manifest our desires. I am Candace Craw Goldman, and this is New Earth Journey. Greetings. It's Tuesday, August 4th. 2015 and this is episode number two of new earth journey radio thank you so much for tuning in today i'm welcoming my first official guest to the show my dear friend heather alice shea and i want to tell you a little bit about heather before we start chatting tonight so heather's an intuitive guide she's a sixth sense expert and coach 
She's an internationally recognized intuitive guide and success coach for spiritual seekers and holistic entrepreneurs who want to go from what's my purpose to mission accomplished by manifesting their inner greatness and living a spiritual, spiritually centered life. Through developing strong intuitive abilities mixed with emotional empowerment, her clients are able to break up with self-limitation and gain clarity, momentum, and find their success-filled, happy place in life and in business. Since an early age, Heather was a profound empath with a deep understanding of the emotional blocks and trauma of others. She began coaching in 2003. However, in 2012, she had a near-death medical crisis which left her with the ability to see and hear energetic information. And she's going to tell us a little bit more about that story in this interview. Heather conducts intuitive sessions via Skype and phone with clients all over the world in her signature down-to-earth style that's full of humor, heart, and the occasional swear word. And quite frankly, <laughs> that's what makes Heather so real and so appealing, at least to me. <laughs> She's one of the most authentic people I know, and mostly she's authentically joyful. Heather received her Bachelor, bachelor of Science in Psychology from the University of North Florida, and her undergraduate research was presented at the 25th Annual Association of Psychological Science Convention in Washington, D.C. She's a certified hypnotist with the International Certification Board of Clinical Hypnotherapy, a licensed heart math life coach and mentor, and a graduate of Marie For Forleo's B-School. She's also a past life regression hypnosis expert, Dolores Cannon Method, and we have a lot to talk about that. And her first meditation CD debuted in Spirituality and Health magazine. And Heather's going to tell us tonight about a brand spanking new online class she's about to offer to the world. And she's going to talk about how each and every one of you out there can actually become your higher self. I could not be more pleased to be chatting with Heather this evening on the show. Heather and I chat quite a bit anyway, and we always have so much to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> and tonight we're going to share our conversation with you. So, phew, what an intro. Hi, Heather. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. <laughs> Hi, Candice. Wow, that is an intro. I did a really good job writing that bio, didn't I? <laughs> Thank you so much for your gracious introduction. And I, I couldn't be more excited to be on your show. I listened to your first show and it was absolutely wonderful. So it is my honor to be here. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. You know, 